Hi, I'm Heather from EasyHealthyBread.com and today we're going to be making a 100% whole wheat sandwich loaf. To get started, we're going to add two and a half cups of whole wheat flour to your mixing bowl. So I do the scoop and sweep method. Um, that's what this recipe is written for and it's where you scoop um, right out of your container and sweep over the top like this. I use the back of a knife right into the bowl. So we have one. And we have two. And then we need one half cup as well. Then we're going to add one tablespoon of active dry yeast. Um, this is what I use. I buy it in bulk from Costco. I keep it in the fridge. Um, as long as it's within its expiration date, you should be fine. Um, if you're nervous, you can proof it with, in some warm water with a little bit of sugar or honey. Um, and if it foams up, you should be all good. So just like that, just toss it in. Next, we're going to do the vital wheat gluten. Um, it's an important ingredient for cooking with whole grains because it adds more gluten to your bread. Whole wheat has less gluten, um, which is what makes your dough awesome and fluffy and edible. Uh, if you don't use it, um, you either need to knead a lot longer or your dough is going to be more like a brick and less like a nice fluffy loaf of sandwich bread. So we're going to start with a quarter cup. Um, I get mine just at the regular grocery store, Bob's Red Mill. If you have that brand. Um, so we're going to start with a quarter cup. I just do the same method as I did with the flour. Scoop and sweep. There we go. In the bowl. And then I'm going to add two extra tablespoons. Um, it helps preserve your bread. Uh, it's like a little preservative and it's going to make your bread fluffier. Um, so some people even add maybe double than that. I'm just going to do two additional tablespoons. So I'm going to just mix that up. I'm not going to turn my mixer on. I'm just going to mix it so it's all incorporated. Actually with my knife. Um, or you can use, you can turn on your mixer if you want. Um, just make sure that all your ingredients are mixed throughout. Then we're going to add a little bit of vitamin C powder. Um, vitamin C powder is another thing that enhances your bread um, and makes it fluffy, which is the hard thing about cooking with whole grains. So we're going to add a half teaspoon of that. You can also just use, if you take like vitamin C um, pills, you can just crush one up, put it right in. It's not going to affect the flavor of your bread, it's just going to make it fluffier. Um, and then we're going to add the water which is three and a quarter cup warm water. I already have it measured out. I just set my tap to hot and wait for it to warm up and pour it in. Um, but you do want it to be warm. Nothing near boiling though, because you'll kill the yeast if you do that. So just a good rule of thumb is the hottest you could handle like on your skin. Then we're gonna add a third of a cup of honey. Uh, I have this awesome thing for measuring out stuff that's sticky like this, um, liquids, honey, molasses, uh, and it just plunges it and you get it all so it's like an accurate measurement. It comes right off. Make sure we get all of it. And it goes. And then the last ingredient is your oil. So you can use any type of neutral tasting oil you like. I like coconut oil. Um, you're going to want to get organic cold pressed if you can. I got mine from Costco. Um, a third of a cup. If you're using coconut oil, you're going to have to melt it first because it's solid at room temperature. I've just put it in a microwave safe bowl. Melted about what I thought was going to be a third of a cup. I just estimated. And then, wow, I estimated right on. <laughs> and pour it in. So you're going to want to mix this up for a couple minutes and let it stand for 10 minutes. And once it's done for 10 minutes, I'll show you what it looks like. We'll be back in just a sec. 10 minutes later and we're going to check on the bread. 
So, as you can see, the dough has sat for 10 minutes and it's getting a little bubbly. So let's make sure you can see that. It's getting a little bubbly, but it's still pretty soupy. So what we're gonna do is add the rest of the flour. If you read the instructions, you saw that it can take between six and seven and a half cups more flour, or total flour, in the recipe. We started with two and a half, so we're gonna work our way between three and a half to five more cups. Um, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you've hit enough flour. It's kind of a fine line, don't want too wet, don't want too dry, so uh, we're gonna show you what that looks like. First, you're gonna add the salt. It's one tablespoon of salt. If you're watching your salt intake, you do not have to add it, you can reduce it. It's purely a flavor thing and it doesn't really do anything to the dough. So, if you want it, add one tablespoon of salt. So we're gonna start the mixer and we're gonna start adding more flour. Stop the mixer here. I'm going to get a spatula and scrape down the sides of the bowl because there's a lot of flour that gets pushed out. Especially because this is really a high capacity mixer. So it can make, I think, about 14 loaves, one pound loaves. And this is probably going to be about two and a half pounds of bread. So I'm going to just scrape down the sides, make sure that gets incorporated in. I don't think that, yeah, it's definitely still too sticky. So I'm gonna turn the mixer back on and add another half cup. shape then you know that it's this is still pretty doughy I think I need a little bit more flour I'm gonna add a little bit more and really it all depends on how accurate your measurements were how old or young your yeast is what altitude you're at temperature all that so it's gonna be different for everybody so just listen to the dough It's definitely done now. 
you can see it's totally come away from it. It's starting to get smooth. And once I knead it for about six or seven minutes with a mixer, uh, it's going to be nice and smooth. Um, if you're kneading by hand, you're going to want to knead for probably about 15 minutes, maybe even up to 20. Um, with whole wheat dough, it needs more kneading to develop the gluten so it will rise. So we're going to put it on the mixer on speed two for seven minutes, and I'll catch you back in a few minutes. As you can see, that's what the bread looks like after it's been kneaded for seven to eight minutes. It's nice and, nice and smooth, and none sticking to the side of the bowl, really, and we're going to let it sit for about an hour, and then we'll cut you back. Okay, so it's been about an hour, and the dough has more than doubled in size. And it's actually fallen a little bit since I took it off the mixer because it moved it, but you can see it's really puffy now. Um, it was not this tall before. It was, it's up to about here now before it was up to about there. So I'm going to show you how to shape it and put it in your two loaf pans. Um, to make it easier, a lot of people use flour so their hands don't get sticky. Oil is better every time. Um, might feel a little gross at first, but I'm literally just going to put some oil on this paper towel. I'm using canola uh, just because it's a little easier than uh, the coconut. If I had still had some coconut melted, but I had only that third of a cup, I didn't have any extra, I would use that, but since it's solid, it's kind of tough. So I'm going to just wipe my clean counter. I'm actually going to use a little more than this. Um, down with some oil. Um, and because we're going to turn the dough right out onto the counter. So you want to get that. You are going to want to get your hands. Nice and fun. And then you're going to want to get your pans. Um, I have one pound pans here and they work really good for me. Um, some people like the bigger one and a half pound pans. If you have a big family, maybe that works a little better for you. Um, just whatever works for you. But you are going to want to grease it. Pretty much any pan you're going to want to grease. It's just going to make your life a little easier. Um, I love these USA pans. I only have one clean today. Um, so I'm going to use glass as well. Whatever you have. But these USA pans, I'll put a link in the show notes. They are fantastic. Um, okay, so we're all greased up. We're going to take this out. Um, and it's okay. The bread is going to fall. And that's fine because we're going to raise it a second time in the pan. Um, this is essentially the punch down part of the recipe. So we're going to just it come out. Let's see, since it's all together, bam, it's out. So if you were to double this recipe, which you certainly can, um, and you had four or five um, loaves going, you may want to get out your kitchen scale and weigh them, but with just two, um, I'm just going to split it right in half, um, and it should be fine. I'm actually going to get a knife. Uh, if you have a bench they're called a bench scraper um, that can sometimes work better but I just literally just kind of want to score it so I know where half is and right down the middle and as things are starting to stick you can re-grease them up um, but I'm just going to put this right here so to do your loaf um, I'm just going to kind of form it into a bowl in on its ends here so it's kind of starts to become oblong. See, I'm just kind of going in like that and then down on the sides and then in so it's a nice olive or olive oval shape and I'm going to drop it right in. I'm going to pat it down a little bit so it fills into the corners because it won't rise into the corners on its own. You kind of have to pat it down. So you can see it's about an inch below the edge of my one pound um, 
loaf pan. So we're going to do the second one. Same thing. I'm going to put a little extra on here because it's getting a little sticky. There you go. So like I said, I'm going to bring it in so it's oblong. I'm going to make it a little bit longer because we're going to fold in the ends. Just like that. And I'm going to fold the ends in. And then one more time like that. Then you're going to put the seam that you created downwards. And you're just going to drop it right in. So they look like this. Pushing them down a little bit. Well, it's slid a little bit. But yeah, pushing it down a little bit so it gets in the corners. So you see that? And then we're going to probably let it rest until... It just depends on the temperature of your house, but I want it to be um, either flush or a little bit over the top of the pan. And then we're going to put it in a 350 degree oven and bake it for about half an hour. So we'll show you what it looks like before we put it in the oven. And uh, we'll be back then. So we're back and the bread has risen. So you can see we have a little bit over the top of the pan. So it's probably risen about an inch and a half right now. Um, nice and puffy, and you can see, just because I used a glass pan, that there's bubbles in there. That's what you want. Um, normally you wouldn't be able to see it. You probably won't use a glass pan, but just to showcase that it's been rising. So we're going to put it in a preheated 350 degree oven for about 30 to 35 minutes. Um, we're going to check it, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's ready. Uh, we're going to put it in. You can see I have a pizza stone that I keep in my oven. It regulates the temperature of your oven. And for artisan breads that you don't use a loaf pan for, um, or pizza, it's really great. So I just leave mine in at all times. So we're just gonna... Put her in and set the timer and we'll be back. So I just pulled the bread out of the oven. Mine took about 35 minutes, um, but I think it's done now. One thing that's nice to do when you take it right out of the oven and it's still hot is you can take some butter and rub it over the top. Take a second to get melty. And that'll give the top of your bread the nice shiny look. And it tastes good too, but if you're trying to count calories or watch your uh, fat, then don't do it. It's just pretty much aesthetic. So I'm doing it this time. I don't do it every time. Um, so I've set them on a cooling rack here. Um, I'm going to leave them in the pan for a couple minutes to cool. I'm going to pop them out of the pan and when we come back, I'll slice it up and you can see how awesome it looks inside. And we're back, we've cooled the bread, and we're going to cut it open so you can see what it looks like on the inside. So I have my bread knife, serrated, it's best for cutting bread. Uh, if you make a lot of bread, you might want to consider um, an electric knife, which is what I have, but I'm just not going to use it because it's loud. Because um, you can cut a lot thinner and more symmetrical slices, um, it's just faster and easier. So we're just going to cut. And I already have this one cut, but you can see you have a nice crumb there. Um, you don't want to cut it before it's cool because it will still be gooey inside. Um, if you wait, and it's, I really cut it a little too soon actually, but it's still maybe a little warm, but um, it's part of the process. It has to cool for the crumb to set up. Um, so you can see just like bread that you get at the store has a nice crumb. Um, and you can slice it up, eat it, um, and keep it in the fridge. Uh, a sealed container is going to be the best, best way to keep this. Or if you don't go through bread very fast, you could slice it and put it in the freezer. And you can just defrost it by putting a slice at a time in the toaster. So there you have it. 100% whole grain bread from easyhealthybread.com. Um, check out all the details in the show notes, um, and we'll see you next time.